Okay, so um, for those people who are looking to generate extra revenue, um, what I'm going to teach you today, you can use to just bring in an extra $100,000 to your bottom line every year, just knowing how to put together these presentations. Now, when we're talking about neuro-linguistic presentations, there are some fine points that we're going to talk about. First of all, you should be using neuro-linguistic presentation styles for any type of presentation that you're putting together for yourself. In addition to that, one of the reasons that I put together presentations for other people that I get at the bare minimum for a 20-slide NLP presentation, we get $2,500, and on average, we get $10,000. So some of you might want to put together presentations for other people. Some of you might want to put together presentations for other people. Now, here's why I do it. I do it because it keeps my ax sharp. It keeps my skill set sharp because after I've created uh, so many NLP presentations for myself, at some point, um, you need to create presentations for other people. And we're going to be getting through to, into everything. We're going to be getting into my PowerPoint secrets, my music secrets, my movie secrets. We're going to be getting into all of the secrets. Some of you, you've seen these phenomenal presentations. You've seen the Anthony Robbins presentations. You've seen the Lisa Nichols presentations. You've seen these phenomenal presenters from all around the country. And you've said to yourself, I want to do that. I want to do that. Some of you are charismatic. And let me just say right there, by the way, all of my charismatic speakers, if you think of yourself as like, hey, when I get on the stage, I'm just charismatic. People just love me. I'm gregarious. I love, just type hashtag charismatic in the feed. Good luck spelling that, but type in hashtag charismatic in the feed. Just go ahead and type that into the feed right now, right? So I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, be sure that if you, let me clarify this. Let me make sure we crystal clear on this. This is not a presentation where you just kind of sit and you just listen and we just drone on. This is actually a highly interactive presentation where we're going to be teaching you step by step. You want to be in the private, elusive, exclusive Facebook group. It's the only place where I'll take questions. I will not be taking questions any place other than the private, elusive, exclusive Facebook group. You want to go to virtual networking live.com. You want to go to virtualnetworkinglive.com. Now, if you are part of Marathon of Excellence Season 2, um, welcome. That was part of the benefits of joining Marathon of Excellence Season 2. Shout out to Village Connected TV, um, Dr. Letitia Wright out of the, from Village Con, uh, from the Right Place TV show on Dish Network. So big shout out to uh, Dr. Letitia Wright. If you are a member of the Head Ladies in tar Charge, Head Ladies in Charge, that's Hashtag H-L-I-C, welcome. Um, this is part of one of your trainings. Also, for those people who are members of the Product Development Academy, um, you will need this. Now, for those people who want the certification, you want the certification, text Shea Brown at 202-270-1662, okay? By the way, do me a favor. Everybody go into the private, elusive, exclusive Facebook group right now, and go ahead and just... Type this into the feed because I don't want anybody to miss out. And my concern is that we're going to get started and somebody goes, oh, my gosh, I missed it. So I want everybody to just type into the feed so everybody gets the notification. We are starting. We are starting. We are starting. We are starting. So everybody type into the feed right now. Hashtag we are starting. Right? Hashtag we are starting. And they're telling me they switch markers, and so I'll, I'll give you that one, Shay Brown. Okay, so we're going to be talking about neuro-linguistic presentations, but everybody type into the feed right now, hashtag we are starting. And Eric, why don't you give me a readout? Let me know who we have out there. Let me give out the, the, the shout-outs for the people who are out there who took action today. And by the way, if you're watching right now, let me know who you are, tell me where you're from, and tell me the topic that you speak on. Tell me, your, not all of your topics, tell me your primary topic. Uh, Tell me who you are, tell me where you're from, and tell me the primary topic that you speak on. Go ahead and type that into the feed right now. Now, we know that the live feed is running about a minute behind what's actually happening here in the audience, but let me go ahead and get, get those people out of the way because I want to make sure that we're tailoring this 
to the things that you speak on. I know we have our network marketers out there, and you speak on things related to opportunities for people to generate more revenue. I know we have our inspirational and motivational coaches and our life coaches out there who speak on issues designed to help people become better at who they are. J.C. Richardson. So what did we say, J.C. Richardson, Shay? Yep. So let me just make sure we got J.C. Richardson. Who else? And use the other market. Uh, Silva, Sylvia Henderson. Uh, Sylvia Henderson, which is one of our power partners of the Idea Academy. So that's Sylvia. Let me just make sure you. I was Mary, giving a shout out. Mary. It? Who? Mary. But wait a minute. Are they listing what they talk about, Shay? Are they listing what they talk about? We're starting. Okay. Well, they, but here, we're starting. Okay. So we got Sylvia Henderson at the Idea Academy. If you need to take your idea, idea from being something in your head and in your heart to being something that's actually being uh, done, it's something that you're actually executing, bringing into the natural world. Doris Birch. Deal with Silma, Sylvia Henderson. We got Doris Birch. Who else do we have? Okay. So these are just some of the early shout outs there. So if you're out there right now, go ahead and tell me who you are, tell me where you're from, and tell me about the topic that you speak on. By the way, for many of you right now, just letting the world know what you speak about may be an opportunity generated for you because now people may be looking for somebody who speaks on motivation, may be looking for somebody like Sylvia Henderson, who everybody should be bringing to their town, who speaks on ideas. We got Mia, we got Mia Zachary. What is, what is she? So Mia Zachary, who speaks on, she's a creative, creative what, Jay? Creative vision developer. Okay, uh, creative vision developer. That's very interesting. Mia, love to hear a little bit more about that, what you do about creative vision developer. Love to hear a little bit more about that. Yes. Okay, you say, did you say Andrea Smith? Swift. Andrea Swift for the first time. Okay, we have a first timer. Now, usually we play the music, Andrea. You're a first timer. We usually play the happy music. But when you invite Andrea, when you let her in, everybody go up and just welcome Andrea. Just show us some love. Welcome, Andrea Swift. Right? Let's see, you're free to, downtown Frida Brown. Okay. Downtown Frida Brown. Charles Johnson. I think he wrote the book, um, Green Eggs and Ham, or it's like a version of business, Green, Am, Green Eggs and Ham, something like that. I remember that book. Uh huh. What else? Who else do we have out there? Did I miss anybody? C.C. Caldwell. Hey, C.C. How you doing? She's, she's been a faithful follower. Tommy Burkhardt. Shout out to Tommy Burkhardt out there. Tommy Burkhardt, right? And have they listed some of the topics that they speak on? I know um, Jafrida Brown speaks on financial compliance. We have um, Sylvia Henderson speaking on ideas. We have Mia Zachary, creative vision director. Donna Davis is out there. Has she listed what she speaks on yet? Donna, Donna, Donna. See, Shay always pronounces the name pronunciates the word incorrectly. It's Dona Davis. Dona. Not Donna. Dona Davis. Okay? Did I get it right, Dona? Did I get it right? Give me some shout out. Give me, give me a shout out if I got it right, Dona. Mary from Atlanta. Mary from Atlanta. How you doing? She speaks on self-knowledge and how it relates to success. And give me that name one more time, Shay. Oh, Mary, M-E-R-R-I, M-E-R-R-I, beloved. I think I saw her in the feed yesterday, and we got plenty of people here in the audience, and just want to shout. Some of the people that are online right now, they're actually here in the audience, so uh, welcome to you all also. Uh, Diane Smith, Exit Strategies. As a matter of fact, Diane actually, um, she is in, she's here to get her Master Practitioner's certification. She actually uh, is already certified in NLP presentation. As a matter of fact, she has one on exit strategy. Uh, congratulations, Diane Smith. She's the, always the consummate student. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So um, those are some of the shout outs. And Shay, just let me know. Just wanted to get a couple to find out what people are talking about. What kind of topics do they speak on? Okay. All righty. So once again, we're getting ready to get started. If you want to use this as part of your certification or you're interested in getting a certification in neuro linguistic presentations, which is the art of how to hypnotize people from the stage, it's the art of putting together presentations, it's the art of storyboarding presentations, it's the art of creating compelling, compassionate, powerful 
presentation. If that's something you're interested in doing, go ahead and text Shea Brown, your first name and your last name, and text Shea Brown, text the word certification to 202-270-1662. And for many of you as speakers, uh, especially my speakers out there, one of the things that we're doing is we think of our only way of generating revenue is through our speaking engagements. But one of the best ways to have... Ma Who? J.C. Richardson speaks to him. Rich motivation. Okay. So um, see what I was saying before, back to this. Demet Demetra Moore. Demetra Moore speaks on out of life, out of life. And by the way, give us kind of out of life. I mean, I, I, like, I like the title. Um, but just imagine for me, Demetra, just let me coach you for just a second. If somebody says, hey, I speak on this topic called out of life. But somebody might need just a little bit of information about what that comprises of so that if they want to bring you in as a speaker, maybe to speak to their organization, to their church, to their conference call, blog talk, radio show, maybe their national stage that they know what you speak on. So go ahead and do that right now. Now, let me just say something real quick, Shay, before we give, give, give the other shout outs. Uh, mastery is what we should all be after if we are speakers, coaches, or trainers. Now, I'll tell you, I don't care what type of mastery you are after. Maybe you're like Glenn Garns. You're, Glenn Garns specializes in like jujitsu or some special type of karate. And, you know, uh, Shay Brown specializes in sales. But here's what I want you to know. That whenever we're talking about the topic of mastery, which is what we're after as speakers, coaches, trainers, and authors, and if you're not after mastery, quit. If you're not after mastery, just quit. Quit. But if you're truly after mastery, all mastery, one key ingredient, one key component is teaching others. It's teaching others. And so one of the things that this presentation is designed to do is to put you in position to teach, help, and train others. And so some of you, after today's presentation, you may desire to use this as part of your certification. If you're interested in neurolinguistic presentations certification, text Shea Brown at 202-270-1662. And if there's somebody right there, out right now, out in the feed, go ahead and do me a favor. Um, just type that into the feed if you're interested in the NLP certification. Text Shea Brown at 202-270-1662. 202-270-1662. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Now, there are a couple of other questions. How long is this going to be? I don't know. I'm going to be honest with you. I just don't know. And we're going to go until we finish. Maybe we finish at 2 o'clock in the morning. Maybe we finish at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. But one of the things I promise is I'm going to give you my absolute best. I'm going to give you exactly what we do. Now, when you start thinking about revenue, don't just think about the revenue you generate as a speaker, a coach, or a trainer, but also think about revenue that you can create through, serve, through the service of others, just training others. And so, as I said before, whenever we do neural linguistic presentation, anybody that's ever hired us, you know that the conversation starts at $2,500, and on average, we end up at about $10,000. So being certified as a neuro-linguistic presentation specialist, you, you, not anybody else, you can generate upwards of an additional six figures in revenue. And so for some of you, this might just be the thing that you need to fund some of your other dreams and visions. This might be just the thing that you need to generate that additional revenue. And so if that's you, text Shea Brown at 202-270-1662 so you can use this as part of your certification. That's the key thing there because you've been here for two days for many of you, uh, and you can use today's training as part of your certification. Now, um, interestingly enough, there are less than 500 professionally certified neuro-linguistic presentation practitioners. Let me say that again. There are less than 500 in the entire world. There are less than 500 certified neuro-linguistic practitioners. So for many of you today, you're going to learn something that you are not going to, that you're going to not be in competition with other people because the market is wide open. And so with that being said, I'm going to grab my trusty chair because we're going to be here for a couple of hours and we're going to talk about a little theory 
uh, before we get into neuro-linguistic presentations. Now, you're going to need a couple of items, and let me just go ahead and write those items on the board. If you have any white paper, like blank white paper, if you have some blank white paper, you know, kind of like the paper you put in your copy machine or your printer, I'm going to encourage you to go get it. Go get it. And some of you are saying, well, how many sheets do I need? Get a stack. Get a stack. Now, if you don't have that, get whatever paper you have. But you're going to need several sheets of paper. Now, here's the thing that I want you all to know. Um, it's, it's one of my favorite quotes. And every time Eric hears me say, he says, Trevor, you can't say that on stage. He says, Trevor, don't say that. And then every presentation, I get back onto the stage and I say the same thing. And every time I say it, people just cringe. But Eric, this is for you. It's a true statement. The world is getting dumber and dumber. Yep. The world is getting dumber and dumber. Does that mean you're getting dumber and dumber? Well, it depends on. Let me tell you what I mean. Is that many of the things that we ordinarily used to use our mind for, we are now transferring that responsibility to inanimate objects. And today, we're not doing that. That's not something we're doing. Let me just use as an example. Is that we, right now, our memories are getting worse. Let me just use that as an example. Our memories are getting worse. Let me just use that as an example. Right now, whenever we need to remember something, what we do is we kind of type it into our, 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 our iPads. We, we type it into our smartphone devices. And subconsciously, what we're doing is we're transferring, transferring the responsibility for remembering that item to that inanimate object. So our mind is not really holding on to it because in our minds, we say, well, it's there whenever we need it. And thus, we're weakening our memory skills. And so first thing I want you to do is I want everybody to just kind of write this down. The hand is a digital recorder for the mind. The hand is a digital recorder for the mind. The hand is a digital recorder for the mind. Everybody type that into the feed right now, and then I want you to write it on your sheet of paper. Write, trust me, do this. The hand is a digital recorder for the mind. You don't believe me? Close your eyes. Close your eyes. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to close my eyes, and I'm going to write my name on this board. And then I'm going to draw a shape. I'm just going to close my eyes and write my name on the board. Now, even though my eyes were closed, even though my eyes were closed, I could still see the image in my mind. And so oftentimes, when we write, when we write, it is the mechanism by which we are transferring images to our mind. It's the mechanism by which we transfer images to our mind. And so one of the things I want everybody to understand today is that you don't need your eyes to see. You don't need your eyes to see, but you do need your mind to see. You don't need your eyes to see, but you do. You do need your mind to see. And so part of this neuro-linguistic presentation style is designed around helping people use their mind to see and illustrate the point that you're attempting to make. So one of the things I want everybody to do today is I want you to commit to using the number one technology that the world has ever created. I want you to commit to using the best technology that the world has ever created. It's the number one technology since the beginning of time. And what is it? A writing utensil. A pencil. A pen. And everybody today, I want to give everybody five seconds to run and get a pen. If some of you think, a pen? Trevor, I was going to watch her. I'm in front of my computer. Yeah. Yeah. Go and get a pencil. Because the hand is a digital recorder for the mind. And I don't want you to forget some of the things that we're going to talk about today. And oftentimes, subconsciously, when you're just typing things, banging away on your computer, when you're just typing things like how I am on my, I, on my trusty iPad and and how I do when I have my phone, what happens is you're transferring the responsibility consciously for, for you. You're transferring this responsibility to this device. And what's starting to happen is subconsciously your mind is letting go of it. And thus, 
we're making ourselves dumber and dumber. Um, using it as an example, um, there was a time when Glenn Garns, you might remember this, Glenn. I'm going to tell my age, Glenn. I mean, some of y'all might know this. Everybody might not know this. But there was a time, Shay, Eric, that if I needed to know how to spell something, I would go and get my dictionary. I would go and I would try to sound it out. I would go and I would look up the meaning. Now, if we can't spell anything, if it just, we just type it up and our what? Spell check <laughs> tells us that it's spelled wrong and we just click on it and it corrects it for us. Thus, we have a world of people who cannot spell. If you don't believe me, check out your friend's Facebook post. It's littered with misspellings, Trevor and Shays included. Right? You could probably find at least five or six because the world is getting what? Dumber and dumber. Right? It's like the movie. We're just getting dumber and dumber. And it's because we are transferring these responsibilities to inanimate objects. I mean, think about it in this way. Um, you know, 10 years ago, you know, if you, wanted to, if you wanted to communicate with somebody, you had to kind of speak to them face to face. Uh, then you had to call them. But nowadays, when you want to communicate with somebody, you send them a text message, 160 characters. You send them a tweet, that's 140 characters. And now people really can't communicate. If you look at people's posts, it's SMH, LOL. And now one of the weakest skills that many of our children have right now, you see it in the children, is their ability to communicate. And because they cannot communicate, now we're starting to see the outbreak of what an inability to communicate creates. If you don't believe me, look some of the violence that's now starting to take place in school. There's starting to be people who are, uh, have these, these problems, these issues, these passions, and they really now don't have the tools or the mechanisms by which to communicate. Communication is going to be one of those skills that five years from now people are going to be teaching people how to communicate. So what I'm telling you today is we're going to be using some good old fashioned, like notice I didn't bring up like a special slide for you. Nah. I have, I have one tool that I'm going to use for you today. The mighty, almighty pen. Everybody put in there hashtag the mighty pen. Put in hashtag the mighty pen. So with that being said, first note of the day is the hand is a digital recorder for the mind. I cannot tell you how many presenters, how many speakers, how many trainers that I run across break the rules. And what I mean by break the rules is they get up and they give these presentations and they don't know it. And the why they don't know these presentations is, for the most part, is not committed to memory. And what they're trying to do is kind of click through their PowerPoint slides to remember it. But if you follow this technique first, if you always write your presentations out first, you won't have as much talk, you won't have as much of a problem attempting to memorize your slides because you wrote the presentation. Okay. So I want to make sure that as presenters, you're not guilty of plagiarism meaning you're not guilty of copying somebody else, so to speak, that you're an original. So we're going to talk about that. So today we're going to be dealing with the topic called neuro-linguistic presentations. And neuro-linguistic presentations is the art. It's the lost art of how to hypnotize people from the stage. It's the art of how to hypnotize people or audiences anywhere, anytime, any place. And we're going to lay this out for you, step by step. So, neuro linguistic presentations, and Shay, I'm gonna make sure, can I, can I use this side of the board? I know I'm gonna use this side going out, so maybe I'll use this side of the board for just a note. So, should, where should I start, here or go over here? So, right here. Okay, so here, right here, okay, right here where the line is, so okay, just making sure. So, okay. Okay, so let's get rid of this one. Is it this one that you want? That one. That's, that's the, Shay said use the, the thick one. So let me get one. They both work, but let's use the thick one. Shay says the people need to see. Okay? All righty. So, neuro linguistic presentation, the core is based upon what is known as the C method. Now, remember that one of the key components of the C method is that you do not need your eyes to see, although using your eyes may enhance the process. But no matter what, you all, everybody needs their mind to see. You cannot see without your mind. As a matter of fact, if you had your eyes and no mind, you could not see. But if you had your mind and no eyes, you could see. 
So you must understand part of dealing with neuro linguistic presentation is starting to train yourself to see with your mind and to start becoming more dependent on your mind versus your eyes to see. And many of us, we're more dependent on eyes versus our minds to see. It's sort of like, um, Shay, are you left handed or right handed? You right handed or you left handed? You're right handed, okay? So you're, you're, you're and, and Eric, you're left handed. So typically, your strongest hand is typically the one that you use the most, right? And, and Shay, for you, you, you said yours is, you're right handed, and Eric is the left handed, right? Eric is right, and Shay, you're left. And by the way, if you're in the feed right now, what, what hand do you write with? Are you a left-handed person or are you a right-handed person? Also, it tells you a little bit how your mind works. Go ahead, type that into the private, elusive, exclusive Facebook group. By the way, if you don't know where that is, go to virtualnetworkinglive.com. Hit the Join button when you get there, and we'll let you in. And Shay, let us know if we have any new members. Virtualnetworkinglive.com, okay? Now, we have Eric, who writes with his left hand, and Shay, who writes with his right hand. Okay, now... We tend to try to do more things with our dominant hand because we use that hand more, right? So many of us are not ambidextrous, and ambidextrous means you just use both hands equally. And there are some people who are gifted in that way. As a matter of fact, um, many people who are specialized or who are gifted in basketball are point guards. A lot of point guards are ambidextrous. They can dribble with one hand and they can dribble with the other hand and they can do it equally, okay? Well, what I want you to know is that your ability to see is the same way, in that to strengthen your other hand, so to speak, you have to use it more. To strengthen your other hand, you really have to use it more. And to strengthen your ability to cause others to be able to see what you are talking about, see what you're talking about, you have to strengthen your ability to communicate directly to their subconscious mind. You got to strengthen your ability to communicate directly to their subconscious and conscious mind. And the only way you're going to do that is to first get used to strengthening your ability to see with your mind, to paint pictures with your words. And we're going to teach you that today. And so just thinking, at the, thinking like the basketball player, the, the point guard can dribble with his left, he can dribble with his right, but... How did he start out? He probably started out dribbling with his right, but he started practicing with his left. He started practicing with his left until his left hand was as strong as his right hand. And here's what I'm telling you. If we had to do the visual test, and I said to you right now, your ability to see, are you stronger at seeing with your eyes or are you stronger at seeing with your mind? Are you stronger at seeing with your eyes or are you stronger at seeing with your mind? When you look at things, look at presentations, do you initially see it with your eyes or do you see it with your mind? Do you start to process what you're actually seeing? Most of us will come away with this conclusion. We need to get better at seeing with our mind. And as we get better with seeing with our minds, we will get better at interfacing with the minds of others. No linguistic presentation is all about interfacing with the minds of your audiences. See, when we give presentations to the audiences all around the country, there's a term that you might hear us use, and you, you, everybody uses it. It's called butts and seats. And it's like, how many butts and seats are you going to have? How many eyes on screen are you going to have? If you're doing a television show, it's eyes on screen. If you're doing like a live audience, you're like butts and seats. And what's really interesting is I don't really think it's about the butts and seats, and I don't think it's about the eyes and screen on the screen. I really think it's about the minds in place, the minds in place. See, right now, there are many people who have the video right now up, but they're doing other things. They're, you know, washing dishes. They're um, distracted. They're sweeping the floor. They're laying down. They're chatting away. They just have it open their minds are actually not engaged with this presentation. And so you want to be more focused on the minds in place. Now, let me tell you why we had you kind of do the hashtags and type the things into the feed and respond back. Because what we want to know is how many minds do we have in place. See, 
Um, anybody who's ever been to any church in America, Chuck, when's the last time you've been to church? Well, we know you ain't been today because today is Sunday, right? You're here with me. But in church, they have something called a call and what? Call and what? Call and response, right? A call and response, right? Right. <laughs> they have a call and response in GoGo, too, for those people who are in D.C. But have you ever wondered why they do the call and response? What they're really trying to do is see who is engaged, who is with us, who is paying attention. What is paying attention is your mind interfacing with the speaker or the trainer that is training at that moment. And so when you, right, you, as a speaker, use these particular techniques, it's not so that you can hear yourself speak and say, hey, everybody, just repeat after me. I am great. No, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get them dialed in, dialed into you, dialed into what you're talking about. But you're also paying attention to who is responding? Now, if you watch any trained speaker, any truly amazing speaker, and I'm not talking about the average basic speaker. I'm not talking about the speaker who is, has taken all of the classes. Because I know that you can speak and you, you, you know this, how to say all the right words. You're not using your verbs. You're, you know, your INGs are perfect. And you've learned how to tell the story. I mean, you've gone to the classes. Yeah, we're not talking about that. We're talking about going beyond that. There is good, but then there's great. And to get great, you're going to have to bring a greater level of understanding to what you're doing. It's not just about the technique. It's about the why. Like, why do you use this particular technique? So now watch this. Everybody, I'm assuming you've been to some church in America. If not, you've been someplace where they've used a call and response. If you hear me, say yes or yes. See, so they say yes. Right? People in the audience say yes. Right? Now, plain speaker will look to see which of the people actually responded. Which speaker said yes, with, uh, or which person in the audience said yes, like yes. Right? And which speaker said yes, and which speaker didn't, or which person in the audience didn't say anything at all. And if you watch the speaker, is they will start to focus their eye contact. They will turn towards and start to zero in and speak directly to the person who is responding. You want to know why? It's because they're reaching out to me that are in place. Watch any trained speaker. A speaker, if the, or if, let's say there's a member who just dialed out. They just on their iPhone. Oh, let me tell my age, they're Blackberry, so to speak. If they're on their Blackberry, that speaker will start to shift. Subconsciously, he'll start to tune that person out. You, they've tuned you out, you've tuned them out. You might use some techniques to get the person to tune in. And I'm going to show you those techniques today. But at the end of the day, these people who or not are practicing neuro linguistic presentations. Now, we said that the basis of neuro linguistic presentations is called the C method. Everybody just type into the group, type in S.E.E.C .E .C method. Because I'm going to teach you the C method today. The C method stands for significant emotional experience. A significant emotional experience. Let me just go ahead and write that on the board real quick. Significant emotional experience. And by the way, Shay, uh, if you have Eric pick up some more markers, I can tell you I'm going to run out of those today. So tell him to pick up a whole set, would you? For many of you, this is not the first time you've heard the term significant emotional experience. But here's what I can tell you. If you want somebody to remember what you're talking about, you will have to wrap it inside of an experience. You will have to wrap it inside of an experience. And we're going to get deeper into that. We're going to talk about what are the components that make up an experience. I want you to write this down. If you want somebody to remember something, they have to have an experience with it. If you want somebody to remember something, they have to have an experience with it. The mind really has two sections. 
And in that is that it has a section where it just holds on to everything. But it has another section where it's able to discard things that are not significant. And why does it do that? It keeps you from being overloaded. I mean, you take in so much information every single solitary day that the mind held on to every single thing you saw, every single image, every single, every single thing you did, your mind would explode. So the mind has its own mechanism by which to kind of filter out bad information or to filter out information that it does not need. It's sort of like your spam filter on your email. Your mind has its own spam filter. And so what's happening is many of us are presenting and our presentations, our trainings are getting caught into the mind's spam filter. And what you have to do is you have to learn how to, as a presenter, how to be able to bypass your audience's spam filter. Everybody type into the feed, hashtag audience spam filter. Hashtag audience spam filter. Your audience is mine. They have a spam filter. The mind has a spam filter on it. It was really interesting is that and we see things that they create in the world, like a spam filter that they, like they have in emails, um, like when you see a spam filter that they have, uh, like on Facebook, it's, it's really just a carbon copy, really, of how the mind works. And many of the things that we do are really just carbon copies of people kind of replicating the mind. It's kind of, it's kind of getting rid of junk. So the question that you got to ask yourself is how do you position your message to get past the mind's spam filter? Hashtag. Mind spam filter. Matter of fact, let me just put that on there right now. It's one of, one of the, right? Hashtag mind spam filter. Now, many of you are thinking to yourself, you know what? He's right. I never thought about that. My mind has a spam filter. It's getting rid of unnecessary information. Now, let me ask you a question. We had uh, Jafrida Brown out there. Jafrida, do you think that your information that you teach people daily out in Alabama is unnecessary? Uh, Sylvia Henderson, do you think that the information that you teach people on how to take their ideas from being here to being a reality do you is unnecessary information? Mia Zachary, creative director, do you think that the information that you teach people about how to bring their creative best to every single situation, do you think that's unnecessary information? No, no, you don't, don't think that. But many of us, in the way in which we're delivering the information, many of us, in the way in which we're training, what we're doing is we are delivering enough information. We are sending the message. We're hitting the send button, and it's getting caught in your audience's mind spam filter. They, they have a mind spam filter. They have a mind spam filter. We all have one. And it's really a protectional mechanism in the mind. Until you better understand how the mind works as a presenter, much of your information is going to be lost. Okay? Now, we're talking about causing people to have a significant emotional experience, the C method. This is what I'm going to teach you first. And then we're going to actually storyboard out a presentation. Now, when I say the word significant, I want everybody to know what I mean. I'm talking about creating powerful and compelling, I hope I spelled that right. Somebody let me know if I spelled that right. Mia Zachary's out there. I know she's checking my spelling. Mia Zachary, you are officially dubbed the whiteboard spell checker, the whiteboard spell checker. Make sure my word that I spell compelling right. But when we're talking about significant emotional experience, when I use the term significant, I'm talking about powerful and compelling trainings and presentations, and I'm talking about powerful and compelling messages. When I'm talking about the emotional part, I'm really talking about what people feel. And when I'm talking about the experience, I'm really talking about what people remember, what people remember. And what happens is, if what you're teaching and what you're training, I don't care what you're training, I don't care how, I don't care if you're talking about calculus, I don't care what you're talking about, if it's not powerful, if it's not compelling, if it's, if they can't feel you, holler if you feel me, holler if you what, hear me, you hear people say that all the time, right, and if it's not, 
people, it's going to go right in the spam filter. You'll never see it. You'll never hear it. Think about how email works. When it goes into your spam box, you never see it. You never knew it was there. Haven't you ever been, into, been to a conference, heard a speaker, and you could not tell them one single solitary thing? You couldn't tell anybody what you remembered about the presentation. You couldn't do it. Why? Because what they talked about wasn't significant. What they talked about wasn't powerful. What they talked about wasn't compelling. You didn't feel it. You didn't have an experience. When people go to the theme parks, you want to have an experience. Check it out. When we're talking about powerful and compelling, write this down. What are the most powerful and compelling reasons why somebody should listen to your training? What are the most powerful and compelling reasons for why somebody should listen to your presentation? What are the most powerful and compelling reasons? Write this down. Every presentation, I don't care if you're teaching a 40-part module, every module should start with what is the most powerful and compelling reasons why somebody should listen to your presentation? Because it's going to go a long ways into putting together a neuro-linguistic presentation. I started this presentation out with the fact that I put together presentations for people and that I generate, I generate anywhere between $2,500 all the way up to $100,000 for one neuro-linguistic presentation. I told you I put them together for CEOs, pastors of churches. I put them together for speakers, trainers, very famous speakers and very famous trainers put them together for uh, many network marketing organizations, and it's always the same thing. It's, hey, I, I told you how much money I made. See, one of the things I told you that was powerful and compelling is that you can generate a lot of additional revenue through mastering this style. One of the things I told you about um, learning the NLP method, or method rather, is I told you that learning this method would allow you to communicate at a different level, at a higher level, at a more direct level with not only the conscious mind, but the subconscious mind. And I started laying out powerful and compelling language patterns that told you why what I'm going to teach you is significant. And then we're going to get into the emotional part. And we're going to get into thinking about. Like, here's the thing. Everything that you the audience to do. You have to think about what emotional state do they need to be in. So I, I'm going to use as an example. Let's just say um, I'm going to be teaching this presentation on motivation. Right? And it's going to be designed to make people feel good. I'm like, yeah! So great! Well, what kind of music do I want the audience to come out to? Here's my choice, Chef. I can come out to happy, 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 or I can come out to amazing grace. Which one do you think the audience is most likely to respond to? Many of us, we're not even thinking about the state, the state, the state that the audience needs to be in before they hear our presentation. They just, here's what's happening, Shay. We, they say, introducing Shay Brown. And Shay walks up to the stage. It's a what? Great day. No music, no change in the state. Nothing is happening. Just absolutely nothing is happening. And here's what happens. Any speaker, matter of fact, if you've ever done this, don't, don't, don't tell on yourself. But have you ever been in a presentation where um, you had to go behind the speaker behind you was bad? I mean, the speaker was bad. And now you have to go behind the speaker who was bad or go behind the speaker who has changed the state the physiology of the members in the audience. And so many of you, you just go into the stage, no music, nothing. But I want you to know that music is one of the easiest methods, methods that you can use to change somebody's state. So my question to you is what state does somebody need to be in? We're going to teach that today. What state does somebody need to be in to receive your presentation? What state does somebody need to be in? Do they need to be motivated? Do they need to be the focus, I mean, what state, everybody take it in right now. What, Jafrida Brown, what state do you need somebody to be in to hear your presentation about financial compliance? Now, I'm going to tell you, what you don't want to do, you don't want them coming in like, you don't want them coming in like, yeah, hey, woo, Jafrida, I'm so pumped about financial literacy. Woo, I'm really pumped about getting my financial compliance in order. 
No, Jafrida, you need me to be slowed down. You need me to be laser focused. So you might not use this high energy, explosive kind of music. But maybe you're like Sherwood. Sure well, you need people to be fired up and ready to go. You have to start thinking about the emotional state that the audience needs to be in to best receive your message. Write that down. What emotional state does my audience need to be in to receive my message? What emotional state? Write this down. Because the colors that you choose, the music that you choose, the videos that you choose, the images that you choose, everything that you choose has a lot to do with what state you need them to be in. And then, the eye, who said that? Oh, okay. Who's that? Mia? Right here? Who's that? Mia? She's correcting my spelling. I'm going to put the E back. I'm going to put the E back. See, Mia's out there helping me spell. See? Number, see? I got my spell checkers out there. See? So. Okay. So. Then we're going to get into the experience. Now, let's, let's, retry, let's backtrack on emotional. What emotional state does the person need to be in to receive your message? What's the optimum state? Because this controls the colors that you use. This controls the sound effects that you use. This controls the music that you use. And as we're mapping out presentations today, we're actually going to show you how to do this. We're going to map out a real presentation. So what emotional state do they need to be in? And then when we get into the experience, by the way, I hope everybody has this written down because I'm getting ready to write, I'm about to wipe this out real quick. And by the way, somebody in the audience, matter of fact, let me just step to the side. Somebody in the audience, take a picture of your screen and kind of just post that up there real quick in case somebody needs to know. So I'm going to just step to the side and somebody just take a picture of the screen and post it into the private, elusive, exclusive Facebook group. We're just going to group notes. We're going to take group notes. We're going to take group notes. And Shay is taking a picture. And some of you are taking pictures. We're going to take a picture and just kind of help it lock it in, lock it in your mind. Okay? So I can erase this, Shay? Okay. So we're going back to the significant emotional experience, the C method. And we're getting into the experience. People have experiences through what they see, through what they hear, through what they feel, and through what they interact with. Let's take it one by one. They say that as humans, we have multiple dreams every night. Upwards of, in some cases, like 10 to 12 dreams every single night. And what's really interesting is that even though many of us are dreaming every single night, rarely do we remember any of our dreams. Why? Because our dreams got caught into our mind spam filter. Hashtag mind spam filter. Now, let's just use, let's just look at how some of your dreams actually bypass your mind spam filter. And when you wake up, you are able to remember it. Just using, just like how you operate in a dream state. Which you'll, keep in mind, listen. Whether your eyes are closed or your eyes are open, your mind is always active. Your mind is active. So to that end, right, 
we're going to look at what the mind is using to filter out your dreams. Like, what is it? How is it filtering what you remember and what you don't remember? And if you focus in on this, if you learn this technique, you'll be much better for it. You'll be able to understand how to bypass your audience's mind spam filter or the audience's spam filter. Okay? So, just matter of fact, let me just ask a question, Shay. Let me go ahead and ask the question in the group. First of all, I'm assuming everybody got some sleep tonight and everybody woke up tonight. Who out there right now remembers what they dreamed about? Just put in I remember or put don't remember. If you remember, put I, hashtag I remember. If you don't remember, put hashtag don't remember. Go ahead and put that into the feed right now. The feed is running about 60 seconds behind what's actually happening live here um, down here at uh, Prince George's County, Maryland, down here in Prince George's County, Maryland. But put I remember, hashtag I remember, hashtag I don't remember. Hashtag I remember, hashtag I don't remember. Just put it in the feed. Now, here's what you're going to find. Many of us don't remember. And the reason that we don't remember is because we didn't have an experience. See, I just want you to think about some of the things that we have an experience with. Just think about some dreams that you've had that you remember. See, I'll, I'll give you an example. There's always the dream that we, we have, that we usually have, where either we're drowning or somebody's trying to kill us or something like that. And so here's what's happening. Our eyes are closed and we are sleeping, and we're enjoying ourselves. And here's what's happening. Even though our eyes are closing, we can, we can see the person chasing us. We see them, they're chasing us, chasing us. We can see ourselves running. We can see us running through the woods or running down the street or running, running, running. We can see ourselves running. We can see the person chasing us. Now keep in mind, we can see this happening in our dream state, even though our eyes are closed, remember, the mind does not need the eyes to see. The mind uses the eyes to enhance what it sees. Let me just say that again. The mind does not need the eyes to see. The mind uses the eyes to enhance what it sees. But it does not need them to see. It does not. Those who are visually impaired, I tell you, they can just, they can see. Now, here's the thing. You're in this dream state. You're running for your life. You're running through trees. You're running. You can see the person chasing you. You can see yourself running, but your eyes are closed. So we know that the first part of the experience has to do with the person's ability to see. So the first thing that you have to do in any, side, any presentation is you have to pre present compelling visual images. First stage, you have to present compelling visual images. Why? Because those visual images become etched in people's minds. Those visual images become etched in people's minds. So what you want to do is you want to present, I don't put it over here, present, Compelling. Let's make sure I spell this right. Compelling visual images. Number one. Present compelling visual images. Compelling visual images. So, as you're putting together your presentation, right? As you're presenting your presentations, one of the things you want to do is every point should have a visual image. Write this down. Every point should have a visual image. Every point should have a visual image. Why? Because when you have visual images associated with your presentations, it is the beginning of the experience. Nobody ever has a nightmare without having seen something. Every nightmare is predicated on I saw something. Every nightmare. It's like I saw something. Somebody was chasing me. Even night, not, not all dreams that we remember are nightmares. Some dreams that we remember, I got rich. 
I had a dream one time, Shay, that I hit the lottery. I mean, I was spending the money. I bought my mama a house. I was like, oh, this is great. I did not. You ever have a dream you didn't want to wake up for? I mean, did you ever have a dream you just didn't want to wake up from? I mean, anybody out there hit the lottery or something like that? I've had some other dreams I didn't want to wake up from, too, but we can't talk about that on television. That was when I was 16. That was when I was 16, and I promised not to say that kind of stuff on stage. But it was an experience. So you got to have compelling visual images. I want you to write this down. What images reinforce the points that I make? Write this down. What images reinforce the points that I'm making? Now, listen, having a good-looking image is not the same as having an image that gives a good visual representation of what I'm talking about a good visual representation of what I'm talking about. In addition to that, you have to learn to paint pictures with your mouth. And by the way, many of you right now, you are, some of you are participating, and some of you are not participating. And part of learning is actually participating in the experience, which is what we're talking about again, the significant emotional experience, the experience. And part of our ex experience is when we participate. Some of you, you, you want to remember this information, but I can guarantee you if you don't participate, you won't remember it. So uh, when we tell you to use the hashtags, do it. Just do it. it. It may be a minor inconvenience, but there are things that we have to do to condition our mind so that we can bypass the mind's what? Spam filter. All we're talking about right now is just getting past the mind's spam filter. And as we're kind of recapping, uh, let me know who's out there. If you're out there, just say, hey, Trevor, I'm here. I'm still here. Um, and we'll go ahead and get back into the presentation. By the way, maybe Mia Zachary or Sylvia Henderson or, you know, those rock stars out there, maybe you can let us know what the last, what was the last thing you heard? What was the last thing you heard? I was just on a rant. I was just on a tangent. And I don't know what the last thing you heard was, but if somebody can just kind of let me know. What was the last thing you heard? Let's just go ahead and type that into the feed. That way we can um, get right back on track. Now, as uh, Shay, let me know what the last thing they heard was, and I'll just pick right back up from there. And, um, and then uh, what I'll do is just do a quick recap. We talked about um, the mind. The first part of creating this experience right, is the person's ability to see. And we learned that the mind can see, can see, can see without the eyes, and that the mind does not need the eyes to see. The mind rather uses the eyes to enhance what it can see. See, one of the things I want you to get used to is that the mind really, really is a data collection system. And it can collect data in a multitude of ways. It can collect data through what it hears and through what it sees. And, and it collects data so many ways. And it uses that data to paint what we call a picture, right? And so many people see things different ways because they collect data in different ways. And so, uh, Shay, do we know um, what, the, what the last thing was? Oh, so we didn't even get into number two yet. Okay, paint pictures. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about painting pictures with your words. Okay, got you. So no, we had. So we, we we lost about ten minutes. Is what you're saying. So um, we were talking about getting back to the, the visual side of everything. And that what we talked about is that, one, every point that you make, you have to think about what is going to become the compelling visual image that reinforces your point. And some of us, we just choose these graphics. Some of us, we're choosing moving graphics and picture of an ocean and just pictures we like. But does that image really reinforce? Does it really reinforce? the point that we were attempting to make. And we have to be conscious of that. And then, because we know that we have to be able to present compelling visual images, we have to learn how to paint pictures with our words. And I want you to write that down. Write that down. Hashtag paint pictures with my words. Or paint pictures with your words. And when we're talking about painting pictures with your words, um, just think about any good audio book. As a matter of fact, if you want to learn the art of how to paint pictures with your words, um, buy a fantasy audio book. This is what I did. I, I bought a fantasy audio book. And I bought a fantasy audio, audio book, and it was um, around like King Arthur and the Knights. And it was talking about this forest. And the forest was lush green. And the colors were so vibrant. 
and the grass was long. And it was so long that as the wind was blowing, you could just see the grass just, just blowing over. And I mean, this is this large field of poppies. And what they started to do was they started to paint pictures with their words so that my mind can see it. See, they painted, see, the purpose of painting pictures with your words is so their mind can see it. The purpose of painting pictures with your words is so their mind can see it. The purpose of painting pictures with my words is so that their mind can see it. I'm going to say it one more time. I hope you wrote this down. The purpose of painting pictures with my words is so their mind can see it. So we can get past the audience's mind spam filter. This is all the things that we're just doing, okay? So make sure that you are starting to paint pictures with your words. If you, are, if you are bad at doing this, go out and buy an audio fantasy book. I don't care which one you buy, but they're going to have to describe some world. And the reason I say fantasy because they're usually describing a world that doesn't exist. And so the only way you're going to be able to see it is for them to do a good job describing it. By the way, plus I like fantasy. Matter of fact, hey, Shay, I'm, I'm going to recommend get Harry Potter. Get, get the Harry Potter's. Get the Harry Potter audio books. By the way, if you're out there and you like Harry Potter, this is hashtag Trevor. I read the hash. I read the Harry Potter books. I, I'm sort of an uber geek kind of kid. You know, I, I read all of them. I read all of them. I pretended to buy them for my daughter, but at the end of the day, I read them all. <laughs> so um, getting back to painting pictures with your words. The purpose of painting pictures is with your words is so that the audience so that but the audience can see it in their mind. So the purpose of painting pictures with my words is so that the audience can see it with their mind. Okay? Write that down. By the way, somebody type that into the feed just to make sure that we're getting good information. Are we getting good information? Yes or yes? <laughs> so, now, what did I do with my trusty marker? Should I make sure I get the right one? Is this, the, is this the right one, Shay? Okay. Shay says that's the right one. So next, we're going to start talking about the other part of creating the experience. Remember, we're talking about creating the what? The experience. We also created an experience through what we hear. So I want to just take you back for just a second, back to the dream. And back to the dream. Remember, I was running through the woods. I was asleep in my bed. I was dreaming. There was Z's. Somebody take a picture of me. You just draw some Z's over my head. And I was dreaming. And I could see myself running through the woods. And I could see myself being chased. And I could see myself jumping over top of things. And I could see as I look back, I could see the person chasing me. I could see the fact that I didn't have any shoes on. So I could see my toes. I could see it. But what's really interesting is that this dream that I was having had sound with it. Now, here's what I want you to know. First, my eyes were closed, but I could see. Now, as I'm sleeping, I can hear the person chasing me. I can hear them chasing me. I can hear my heart beating. I can hear my breathing. I can hear myself running through the woods. I can hear all of this. Now, mind you, I'm still asleep. My TV is not on. My radio is not on. But I can hear, but I'm asleep. I can hear, but I'm asleep. I can hear, and there's no external sounds going on around me. And so here's the next thing I want you to know. The mind can also hear. The mind can also hear. And so what we have to think about is the fact that to create this amazing experience, it is also based upon what people hear. Because remember, the only dreams that we remember are the ones that we have an experience with. Write that down. The only dreams that we remember are the ones that we have an experience with. All the other dreams get pushed into the mind spam filter and it gets discarded. The only dreams that we remember, the only dreams that we remember are the ones that we have an experience with. The only presentations that we remember are the ones that we have an experience with. The only speeches, the only trainings that we remember are the ones that we have an experience with. 
i.e., I had a dream that was a what? An experience. You don't believe me? Ask your parents. You don't believe me? Go back and watch the I have a dream speech. It is a what? It is an experience. The only thing that people remember are things that they haven't experienced with. Everything else gets pushed, get pu gets pushed into the mind spam filter. Do you hear me? Okay, now, let's get back. The mind can hear. And you have to think about what the mind is hearing. And you have to think about what does your audience need to hear to reinforce the points that you make. See, with the images is what do they need to see to reinforce the points that you are making. With the audio part is what do they need to hear to reinforce the points that you're making. Right, let's just say, hey, how would you like to make more money in 2013? Well, Eric, let me just ask you a question, Eric. Eric, what is a sound effect that you might use to represent money? Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Everybody, everybody says cha ching. Cha ching. Everybody say cha ching. Cha ching. Everybody type it in the feed right now. I don't even know how to spell ka ching. Is it cha ching or ka ching? But, say that. No, no, it's a tache. Is it ka ching or cha ching? Depending on which word you use, type it into the private, elusive, exclusive Facebook group right now. Do you use ka ching or cha ching? Which one do you use? Ka ching or cha ching? Now, here's what's really interesting. People are typing it into the private, elusive, exclusive Facebook group by going to virtualnetworkinglive.com right now. People are, are writing it down right now. But you know what's really interesting, Eric, is as people are writing this down, people are hearing the sound effect. As people are writing this down, they are, they are writing this down, and they see these words, but they hear them. The mind heard the sound when they wrote it. Interesting, right? Mind is a powerful thing. It's a definitely a terrible thing to waste. Is that an original? <laughs> so let's get back to business. So we're talking about what does a person need to hear to reinforce the points that you're making? What do they need to hear? See, let me just take you back just a second and Shay, I'm going to erase the Shay. Is it okay if I erase this? By the way, by now, I hope somebody, let me, let me let the people take the picture of the board one more time before I erase this. Go ahead right now if you want to just do a screen capture, take your phone out and take a picture of the board. Go ahead and do it right now because I'm getting ready to erase this. Okay. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All we're talking about is creating the experience. Why? Because anything that the mind doesn't have an experience with, it pushes into the spam filter, the mind spam filter. That's why some of us learn calculus and learn algebra, and even though we got A's in it, we still don't remember it because we didn't have an experience with it. We didn't use it. We didn't have any experience with it. We just don't remember it. Why do we remember how to ride our bikes? We had an experience. Everybody who ever learns how to ride a bike always has an experience with it. That's why they don't forget it. You know one, you know one experience that people have when they ride their bike, Eric? They fall down. Right? They say, ah, oh, I remember. You know, most people who ever learn to ride a bike, you know what they remember? They remember falling down. They remember scraping their knee. They remember the process. Everybody remembers the time when they were pedaling and nobody was holding them. Everybody remembers the time when they were going without the training with like, oh, I got it, I got it. And then they're like, hold up, how do I stop? They remember, <laughs> I know how to ride, but I didn't know how to stop. I remember how to learn how to use the brakes. Why don't people forget how to ride a bike? They say, once you, once you learn how to ride a bike, you never forget it. Isn't that what they say? Isn't that what they say? The reason why they don't forget how to ride a bike is they have an experience with it. Because they have an experience with it. The mind discards things that it does not have an experience with. If you don't create an experience in the mind of your audience, they will discard your training. They will discard what you're talking about. They might feel good. They might have clapped their hands, but at the end of the day, they remember nothing. And you got to get out of the you got to get out of the ovation business, and you got to get into the business of actually teaching people, training people, and causing people to have experience. You got to get into the experience business. So now back to what we hear. So now. We know that the mind can hear. We got to think about these audio-related audio points that we can use to reinforce the points that we're making, like cha-ching when we hear money. Um, what's really interesting is there was a, um, there's a new car out, Eric, and um, it's called Telsa. It's a, it's a car by Telsa. And 60 Minutes did a, um, a uh, sort of like an interview, an expose 
on this car called Telsa. And Telsa is like this high, this, um, this, this luxury car, and it is um, high end, and it's, it's really popular now all around the country. And one, because it doesn't use gas at all. It's not a hybrid. It's a total electric car. It's expensive to make. It's called Telsa. By the way, somebody look that up and make sure I got that right. It's called Telsa. Well, here's what happened. A few weeks ago, 60 Minutes did an expose on it. And they were kind of showing the car, and it was like sleep. By the way, I want one of the car. Hashtag get Trevor a Telsa. But they were driving the car, and they were whipping that joke around. That joke is fast, it's sleek, it's smooth. Eric, it's smooth. I mean, it's silver. I mean, you could just see that joke just cruising down the road. It's just taking curves. I mean, Eric, this thing is just hugging the curves. I mean, you just see the lights, they're just big, and this thing is just. You see me painting the pictures with my words? Did, did you see it? I started to paint the pictures. You start to see the car as well. Well, here's what 60 Minutes did. 60 Minutes realized that when the car was accelerating, doing like upwards of like 60, 80, and 100 miles an hour, that the car didn't make a sound. So they were flooring it. And this car was like this. No sound. So you know what 60 Minutes did? 60 Minutes went back and edited the footage. Edited, it edited the footage, and what it did was it added the sound. Now, what sound does a car make when it's accelerating? That's the sound. That's the sound effect. Why? Because they realized that there was something missing from the experience. The cars people that had the experience, they had to add the sound effect. Later on, Telsa reached out and said, our car does not make that sound. 60 Minutes had to recant, the, recant the, uh, the expose and admit to the fact that they added sound. Why did they add sound? Now, just think about it. This is 60 Minutes. They're adding sound. Now, let me ask you a question. 60 Minutes is adding sound. They've been around for, what, 20 years, 30 years? Somebody look it up and tell me how long 60 Minutes has been around. Call Siri. Ask somebody. They've been around. They're at the top of their game, and yet they are adding sound to their presentation. They're adding sound for their audience. And my question to you is, why are you not adding sound to your presentation? If they had to use it to make a point, why don't you? See, go back to my nightmare. I can hear people. Let's just think about a, a famous movie from the 80s. I'm going to use this. this. This is a famous movie from the 80s, Eric, and it looks a little bit like this. This is water, Eric. This is, this is water. And then they had the visual image. They had the visual image, right? And the visual image was just this. Right? Let me just use one of these new markers. I'm going to use one of these new markers right here. Right? And then all you saw was a triangle out, sticking out of the water. You just had kids playing. Oh, you saw kids playing on the beach. You saw water. You saw women in like bikinis and guys in like swim trunks and these are sand and beautiful sunny day. And if that's all you saw at the movie, nothing would happen. But then we hear something, Eric. We hear something, Jay. We hear something, Darlene. We hear something, Sylvia. We hear something, Glenn. What do we hear? We hear dum 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 and then you start seeing people running. First thing you hear is you hear, dun, 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 dun. It gets faster and faster and faster. And then you hear, ah! You hear something, you hear somebody scream. They start creating the experience. It's really funny. 20 years later, 30 years later, the movie Jaws is still a classic. People, you still remember the movie. All I had to do was draw the lines, right? Draw a triangle. And give you dun 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 dun, and you remember. You want to know why you remember it? Because you had an experience. The mind holds on to experiences and it discards everything else. You gotta know this. And the purpose of a neuro linguistic presentation is to cause people to have an experience. The purpose of a neuro linguistic presentation is to cause people to have an experience. Now, what sound effect? do you need to add to your presentations to reinforce your point? And then people have an experience through what they feel, through what they feel. Now, one, you can use sound effects to create that experience, 
But you can also write this down. You can use sounds to create feelings. You can use music, correction, correction. You can use music to generate feelings. You can use music to generate emotions. So I'm just gonna write this down. Music creates emotion. Hashtag, music creates emotion. Let me just ask a, a, a question. And, and I hope that you don't mind me just getting a little personal with you right now, uh, especially if you're sitting here live. And especially if you're watching online. If you've ever been in love, I mean just ever been in love, just type into the feed, I've been in love. Just type into the feed. I've been in love. I mean, seriously. And I want you to just think back for just a second. Who was your first love? Some of y'all might even want to share it in the feed. Who was your first love? My first love, her name was Janice. Janice Shea, she used to write her little T's this special kind of way in her eyes. And I just really liked everything about her. I even liked how she wrote her name. I just thought it was just wonderful. Who was your first love? Just type it into the feed right now. Um, if you're on the paper, some of y'all just going above. You're going above. You, you're drawing pictures of the person. It, it, this, this ain't high school there. Take it, take it, take it down a notch. But um, just think about it for a second. Now that you're thinking about your first love, think about your song, you know, the song, you know, the song that's like, kind of like y'all song, so to speak. And just think about your favorite love song for a second. As a matter of fact, Go ahead and type your favorite love song into the feed right now. Maybe it's a little Luther Vandross, you know. Eric, you married. You got love song? Look at Eric over there. He's in the zone. He's like, this, this thing is Keith Sweat. What, 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 we, we, we ain't doing Keith Sweat. Keith Sweat, Eric, I need a real singer. He's like, hey, Eric wrote Keith Sweat. Eric, you need a real song, Eric. Keith Sweat can't sing. He, just, he was just real passionate. He just made a lot of gestures, but he can't sing. Some of y'all, I see some of y'all write Johnny Gill. Um, hey, what, come on, what's your favorite? Celine Dion. Some of y'all write some interesting, interesting titles. But what's your first love song? Go ahead, go ahead, share it in the private, elusive, exclusive Facebook group. Write, write the love song. Write down a love song that just resonates with you. Write down a love song. And share, as they kind of type them into the feed, kind of let me know what people's favorite love song is. Just let me, let me get a handle on what their favorite love song is. The song that kind of gets them in the mood. You know? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type it, take one of these recola talk I'm gonna do a shea move. Always and forever. Always, oh, always and forever. I think that's whistle. Whistle. She said always and forever, heat wave. Heat wave. Oh, the original heat, heat wave. wave. I was gonna go with whistle, like the 80s. Demetrius version. said Luther Vandross. Luther Vandross. But she, she didn't say what song though. Nah. See, they ain't sharing the songs. They say, see, some songs make them get in love, Shay, and then some songs we can't, what it does, we can't talk about on television. Tommy, Tommy says 60 Minutes has been around since 1968, 46 years, by the way. What? 46 he years? You, he wants you, want you to know that. Okay, okay. Wow, wow. Okay. So, and it, was that C.O. Redden? That was Tammy. Okay, gotcha. Tommy, Tommy. Tommy, Tommy okay, gotcha. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy McClung out of New Mexico. Okay, so... You guys are typing in there right now. And what I want you to know is that song. Faithfully by Journey. Faithfully by Journey. I don't know that song. Somebody put the YouTube. Matter of fact, here's the, here's the exercise. Okay. Your feet, your feet said Tony Braxton. I love me some him. I love me some him. Hey, she loves me some. She loves herself some Trevor. I, I like that song. <laughs> so, listen, this is what I want everybody to do. This is kind of a quick exercise. We're going to have fun. Everybody put hashtag said, have fun. Lights. Shot Lights. Shot Lights. What's up? Bet you by golly, wow. I know that song, Shay. I don't know the rest of the words. All I know is Eric Bet said, you by golly, wow. Can You Stand the Rain, new, new edition. Who put, who put Eric for Can You Stand the Rain? Oh, Eric, you put Can You Stand the Rain? <laughs> Johnny Gill, the whole gang, new edition. Okay, okay. Okay. See, I got to behave. I got to behave. Here's what I want you to do. Quick exercise, everybody. Um, go to YouTube right now. Type in your favorite song. Type in your favorite song. Evelyn said, your there's song. no me without you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no me without you. Who sings that? No me Evelyn. without you. There's no me without you. I don't, I don't, I don't know that song. Here's, here's, I want to know your song. So what, here's what I want to do. I want to know your. I want to know your song. This is what I want you to do. Wait, say. Let me give me the exercise. Then you'll get read it off. Go to YouTube. Do a search for your favorite song. Find it. Get the link. 
get the link, copy the link, and then come back and post it into the private elusive exclusive Facebook group. Go get the link to your favorite song. Go get the link to your favorite song. Like Eric put in Can You Stand the Rain. So Eric, what I want you to do is go over to YouTube, do a search for Can You Stand the Rain. When you find the song, sometimes you're gonna find a video, and sometimes you're just gonna find the song where somebody just kind of upload it. And then come back over, come back over to the private elusive exclusive Facebook group at virtualnetworkinglive.com and type in or post the link to your song. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna automatically post the video. So what you do is you post the link, and after you post the link, you gotta hit the space button. Copy the link, put it, come back over, post it, and hit a space after the link, and it'll automatically bring in the image from YouTube. And it'll let us all see and kind of hear your song. Music does evoke people's emotion. And so one of the reasons that we did this quick exercise is to just show you, just to show you the effect that music has on you. Some of you, when you heard the For You, it took me right back to all of the million weddings I've been to, right? It just took me right back. I, trust me, I was not catching any garters or anything like that, but I was there at the wedding. And so um, that being said is that music does evoke people's emotional state. It does evoke people's emotional state, okay? And so what you want to do is you got to think about what music can you use to get people in the mood. So one of the things is when we were working on Shay's neurolinguistic presentation, we realized that one song that gets his audience in the mood that he wants them in is Happy. You know, and that is his song. Happy, happy. Like, if you ever want to get Shay started, just start playing Happy, and Shay, will, his mood will pick up, the audience will pick up. I mean, the reason why that song was nominated for a Grammy is because it did something. It, when they nominate a song for a Grammy, they're not necessarily nominating the song for the Grammy because it's the best song. They're nominating the song for the Grammy because the feeling that it evokes in the listener. It's a feeling that evokes. I, I mean, I'll take you back. Let me, let me take you back. Is it right? right? Be what? Be what? Everybody, you remember the song. You're like, hey, this song just makes me feel good. Everybody be happy. Music, this song, just the. Pass that in the group, Eric. Pass that in the group. Be happy. Just be happy. What does it do? It changes our emotional state. Some of you right now, you're thinking about, well, what mood do you need people to be in? Well, maybe you need people to be happy. When they go to the funeral, let me tell you what song they ain't going to play. When you go to the funeral, they're not going to play. They're not going to play Be Happy. When you go to the funeral, they're not going to play. Dun, dun. They're not going to play for Ray or Be Happy. Here's what they're going to play when you get to the funeral. Everybody's going to have on all black. The limo is going to pull up. There's going to be the lady sitting on the front row. She's going to have on all black and a hat and something that's covering her face. People are going to be crying. Oh, there's going to be all sorts of crying, all sorts of tears. I mean, many of the funerals I've been to, I digress as to whether all funerals have to be miserable. And then they're going to play the song. Let me see if you can guess. What is the number one song played at many funerals all across America? What's the number one song played at an American funeral? Let me give you a hint. Go, go, let's, let's vote. Let's see who gets it right. Go ahead and post it into the group right now. Go ahead and post it into the group right now. Let me give you a hint. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, see, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. It's amazing grace. Why did you play the song? Because music evokes emotion. And what they're going to do, and let me just hit mute on my computer real quick. I was enjoying everybody. The reason why they're going to play the song is because the state that they want you to be in. They, they are letting you get your grieving out. And what they're doing is evoking this emotional state that causes you to grieve so that you can move through the grieving process. I mean, that's why they play it. My point is, is that music is part of the, exper the, the experience process. And if you want somebody to remember what you're talking about, you got to wrap it inside of an experience. So use music to create an experience, right? Or correction, use music to evoke somebody's emotion, to cause them to be able to feel. So we know that to be able to have an experience, they got to see something, they got to hear something, but they got to feel something. They got to feel something. They got to feel it. What did you feel when you heard your favorite love song? See, what if I was doing a presentation about you got to learn how to love yourself? And see, 
just think about your first relationship. Just think about your first love of your life. Just think about your first love song. And you played it every time you thought about that person. But what song do you play when you think about yourself? And you might just play the Luther Vandross song just to cause people to realize what it feels like to cause people to be able to, to understand, to get the feeling, the, the, the emotional state necessary for them to be in to get the point about learning how to love themselves. And I'm just using this as a point. Just using it as a point. Music creates emotion. It helps people get into a certain emotional state. Also, stories. Stories help people get into an emotional state. And so I was listening to um, Shea Brown's story the other day. And it was really interesting. And if you don't mind, Shay, I'll just kind of recant the story. Shea was telling about the process by which he became one of the world's top sales scripting experts. And he was talking about the fact that he said, imagine, he, uh, as a matter of fact, I remember exactly what he said. He says, has anybody in here ever been in love? And a lot of people raised their room, raised their hand, and he said, well, is anybody here still in love? A lot of people raised their hand. And he said, I want you just to imagine for a second losing the love of your life. And he paused. He said, imagine using the love, losing the love of your life twice. And that happened to me. And I went through this divorce, and it shook me to my core. And while this was happening, I lost my job. They gave me a pink slip. And while this was happening, I ended up having to file bankruptcy. And while this was happening, one day I was looking out my window, and they were towing away my car. And I just felt like my world was coming to an end. And all of this, while I had to take care of my two young boys, Charles and Shay, and they're watching my car go away. And I have to tell them that I'm unemployed. I have to tell them that I don't have a job. And it shook me to my core. That was Shay's story. And some of you, you heard him tell his story and about how he made this amazing comeback. Everybody put hashtag America loves a comeback and just tag Shay Brown. Just put hashtag America loves a comeback, right? And put at sign Shay Brown. Tag Shay Brown in it, right? And I see that they are ringing my phone. And Eric, if you'll just go ahead and take my phone. It's people that's trying to get the certification in. If you'll just let her know that I'm still training. OK? And it's the first number on there to say, hey, I'm still training. So at the end of the day, tell them they haven't been late. And just tell them I'm still training. I should be done in a few hours. So now, here's the thing. As Shay was telling his story, you could feel it. You could feel it. You could feel it as I was telling you his story. So stories help evoke emotions as well. Stories help evoke emotions as well. Go ahead and write that down. And then, now we have three components. Let me just check it off. We have creating an experience through what people see, creating an experience through what people hear, creating an experience through what people feel, using stories to evoke emotions, using music to evoke emotion. Here we're really using sound effects to reinforce our points. Here we're using music to reinforce the emotional state. Think about what emotional state you need them to be in. And then last but not least, you can create a significant emotional experience through letting people interact. Having a participatory exercise built into every presentation. You should have a participatory exercise built into every presentation. You should have a participatory exercise inside of every presentation. Presentation. So I'll give you a perfect example. Today, there were many ways that I had for you to participate. I had you do the hashtag, music creates emotion, hashtag, get it done. We have all sorts of hashtags that we did, to, that we used today, and we had you type those in. 
Now, the reason why we had you type those in is to allow you to participate in the experience, to allow you to participate in what was going on. I had everybody go out and post their favorite YouTube link. What was I doing? I was causing you to participate. Why? So that I would be able to etch today's experience in your mind. If you want a person to remember, right, if you want a person to remember something that you're teaching, if you want a person to remember something that you're training on, if you want a person to remember, if you want a person to remember, you're going to have to wrap it inside of an experience. Now, if you want them to forget, don't wrap it inside of an experience. But if you want a person to remember something that you're teaching on, training on, coaching on, speaking on, if you want a person to remember, wrap it in an experience. The mind holds on to experiences and it discards, it discards things that it does not have an experience with. I mean, even in military, they, they have a term for it. They, they call it, right, they call it post-traumatic stress disorder. And what it is is that a soldier has had an experience so traumatic that he can no longer forget. Now. The mind really does two different things really interesting. Is that if the experience is so traumatic, it'll just forget it because it's too painful for the mind to hold on to. But many of our experiences are so powerful that the mind can never forget it. Thus, you have post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, let's go back to this dream state. Remember, I was sleeping, and I could see myself running through the woods. I could see the person chasing me. I could see the jumping over things. I could see everything. I could see my shirt. I could see the shirt of the person who was chasing me. I could hear myself running over stuff, jumping over stuff. I could hear my heart beating. I could hear. I could hear while I was dreaming. I could hear my breath. I could hear it even though there were no sounds in the room. I could see it even though my eyes were closed. But there was something that I was feeling in this dream. There was a sense of panic. <gasps> oh my God, they're gonna get me. I gotta keep going. I gotta keep pushing. Oh my God, I'm drowning. I could feel it. And there was some interaction. It wasn't me watching somebody being chased. I was the one being chased. And Shay, you wanna open that door, there's another person trying to get in, right? And at the end of the day, this experience is what caused me to remember my dream. Remember, we have multiple dreams. We have multiple dreams every single day. But we only remember a few of our dreams a year. And which dreams do we remember? The ones that we have experiences with. We hear hundreds and thousands of speeches every day. We are part of hundreds and thousands of trainers every year. We go to hundreds and thousands of conferences every year. We hear hundreds and thousands of sermons every year. We see hundreds and thousands of presentations and PowerPoints every year, but yet we only remember a few of them. Which ones do we remember? We remember the ones that we had an experience with. If you want somebody to remember what you're training on, what you're teaching on, what you're coaching on, what you're speaking about, what you're saying, you got to wrap this inside of an experience. All about the experience. Write that down into the group. Hashtag. It's all about the experience. Now, let me just recap. You cause a person to have an experience through what they see. You cause them to have an experience through what they see. You gotta, you gotta use compelling visual images to reinforce your point. You cause a person to have the experience through what they hear. You need to look for sound effects that reinforce your point, i.e., if you use the term money, you want to use the sound effect cha-ching. If you are asking a question, maybe you use the Japanese music. Do, 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 right? So you might use that if you say, I have a, on the slide it may say, I have a question. And you might play the music. Sound effect. Then you cause them to feel something, right? Cause them to feel something by using music, by using music to reinforce the emotional state, but also using stories. Remember when I told Shay's story? I told Shay's story of going through his painful divorce, going through the bankruptcy on his way to coming back and becoming one of the top 
sales scripting trainers in the world right now. He's actually rated number four in the world. Everybody put a hashtag go Shay. He's going to go from number four to number three this year. I believe that. And we talked about the feeling. And we talked about using stories and music to evoke those feelings. One small note about using stories. You use stories to connect with the past and bring people forward to new information. We call that a baseline. And so oftentimes, you can use a story to create a general point of understanding. You should use this in your presentation. And then you can take them forward to new information. Notice, I didn't just say, hey, go out there and use music to tell a story, to use music to create emotion. I took you back to your first love. I took you back to the music, the time. And then I used that information to connect the old with the new. And see, what happens is a lot of times, we try to take people into new information without any history to begin with. And let me just say something. There is no such thing as new information without a history. New information, a person who presents new information without the history, right, in many cases, if they do that, it's because they don't know the history. So know the history of the information that you are presenting and connect the old with the new. So use old information to bring them forward to new information. How do they teach you multiplication? Hey, how do they teach you, how do they teach you multiplication? Do they start out with teaching you two times two is four? Do they start out with teaching you three times three is what? Nine? Do they start out with teaching you four times four is 16 or five times five is 25? No, they do not teach you multiplication that way. They teach you multiplication by first teaching you what? Addition. Are you teaching people multiplication before you teach them addition and subtraction? When they teach you division, they teach you division after they teach you multiplication. Why? So you can use the multiplication to check the to see if the answer is right in division. So when you start teaching new information, and many of us, we just jump right into the new information without connecting it to the past, without creating a baseline. This is significant. This is key. So when you're using your story to evoke an emotion, remember, you're connecting the old with the new. Everybody type in the hashtag, connect the old with the new. Hashtag, connect the old with the new. Write this on your sheet of paper. Write it down. Write it down. Connect the old with the new. Hashtag, connect the old with the new. Okay. And then, last but not least, you want to create interactive experiences. In your presentation, are the interactive experiences that allow the people to participate? If all you're doing is speaking, if all you do, see, there is a difference between giving a speech and giving a neurolinguistic presentation to cause an experience. See, speeches, speeches never, ever take into account the audience experience. It has information that goes out one direction. But when we get into the art of neurolinguistic presentation, we're talking about opening, opening up a bilateral communication, a bilateral communication where information is going out and information is coming in and it allows the presentation to take a unique form every time it's given. So that's why a person who is given a neuro-linguistic presentation, even if they've given this talk the same topic a million times, every single audience, it is different. Let me use as an example. We gave the pre I've taught this, you know, at many different universities. I've taught this to many CEOs. I've taught this particular training to lots of pastors of different large mega churches and things like that. And every time that this message is taught, every time that I certify a new neurolinguistic presentation specialist, it always takes a different form, even though it has the same information. And why? Because using it as an example, when I gave you the interactive experience. You posted, a lot of people started posting this love song, posting that love song. I've been in audiences where every love song was like from the 40s. I was, I never heard it. It was like, Trevor, you never heard this. And there were people in the audience who at the time were kind of, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. wonder what time is lunch? Wonder what time are they bringing the chicken? But came alive when we started talking about something that resonated with them. 
and we started talking about their songs. And they wanted to share their songs from the 40s, share their songs from the 50s. And they got excited because it wasn't about me at that point. It was about them. And when you create an interactive experiences within your presentation, you no longer make the presentation one way, right? You know presentation. You make it bilateral. And that's how you can give the same presentation to a different group. But each time, it takes on a unique feeling. Each time, it has its own unique each time it takes its own unique shape because every audience is going to participate in a different way. Every audience is going to participate in a different way. And so some of you keep trying to create new message after new message after new message after new message because you're afraid that the old message, right, is getting what? Old. No, the old message doesn't get old so long as you create ways for the audience to participate because every audience will participate in a different way. Every audience will participate in a different way. So you must have interactive experiences. Another interactive experience is what we call, and um, is Mia Zachary out there? So, Mia, I want you to check my spelling on this, but through what we call mnemonic devices. A mnemonic device, right, is sort of back to that call and response, like to that call and response, right? Um, perfect example, one of the best users of mnemonic Devices that I saw gave an amazing, what I refer to as a neural linguistic presentation, a presentation that just hypnotizes audiences on the stage, was uh, Nichols at the Power Networking Conference by George Frazier. And her new modern device was Yes, Yes. And she said, every time you feel like I hit your, hit your button, every time I'm talking about you, every time this resonates with you, I want you to say yes, yes. See, one day I figured out that I just needed to get up and stand up to it myself. And the audience said, yes, yes. He said, I just realized that my best was yet to come. And somebody said, what? Yes, yes. And she, she created a mnemonic device. And every time somebody felt it, they were saying, yes, yes. Remember that, Shay? People would just pop up, yes, 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 yes. But type into the group right now. Hashtag yes, yes. Just big shout out to Lisa Nichols out there. But Really, she had a mnemonic device. People were participating in different ways. We saw her give it one time, and people were like, yeah! We saw her give it one time, and people were out in tears and overflow with just emotion. And these participatory experiences are the crux of a new neuro linguistic presentation. And we're going to take a break in a few minutes. But before we take our first break, because when we come back, I'm going to take a 10-minute break, but when we come back, we're getting ready to put together a neuro-linguistic presentation from the very beginning. Like I'm going to build one real time, live, and you're going to see it done. And we're going to create it together. And this presentation that we're going to create together, it belongs to everybody out there. Anybody, I give up rights right now. Eric, send a, send a note to the attorney. I give up the rights to this presentation. It is now an open source presentation. The presentation that we're going to create, anybody, anywhere in the world can give it. You have the rights to it. It is an open source neuro-linguistic presentation. Let me say that again. It is an open source neuro-linguistic presentation. We're going to create it real time, and you own it. You, anybody can claim the rights to it. You can give it. I'm going to, give, I'm going to create one for you real time today. I'm talking about one that people pay us tens of thousands of dollars for. So let's just do a quick recap. We got to cause people to have a significant Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so like, what is that sound? Right? We, we got to cause people to have a significant emotional experience, right? A significant emotional experience. We're talking about something powerful and compelling. Powerful and compelling. We got to cause people to be able to feel it through the emotional effect. And then we got to cause them to have this experience so that we bypass the minds, the mind spam filter. We got to bypass the mind spam filter through creating these experiences. And how do people have experiences? Experiences are always composed of things that people see, of what they hear, what they feel, and their interaction with it. People don't have experiences where they're just sitting on the sideline. They have experience because they're part of it. Let people become a part of your presentation. Let people become a part of your messaging. Let people become a part of your trainings, your teaching, your speech. You got to let people become a part. And don't be afraid. Trust me. You'll become better for having allowed people to become a part of the experience. Because at the end of the day, I want you to write this down. Experiences don't belong to us. They belong to everybody. Experiences don't belong to us. They belong to everybody. Now, this is the first part 
of the training on neuro-linguistic presentations, how to hypnotize audiences anywhere, anytime, at any place. Some of you right now, you've heard me, and you want to know how you can get certified. You want to know how you can go deeper into this training. I'm only going to go deeper. It's only going to get better. Let me give you some quick instructions while we're on the break. You want to text Shea Brown at 202-270-1662. 202-270. Even if you're here in the audience right now, you want to text Shea Brown at 202-270-1662. You want to text your first name, your last name, your email address, and you want to text the word certification. You want to text the word certification. I'm going to go ahead and write that on the board right now. Right? And then I'm going to give you some information. By the way, is this information good or what? Yes or yes? yes. Right? Good information, right? So what I want you to do is just realize that, just think, this right, we cannot go any further, and this will just change the way that you are presenting, right? And it will create profitable presentations. If you do this, you will captivate your audience. You will enthrall your audience. They will hang on your last word. They won't watch the clock. They won't be watching their cell phones. They won't be text messaging. They won't be hanging out on Facebook. They won't be hanging out on Twitter. They're going to be listening to you. And at the end of the day, when you go for the close, when you go for the close, they're going to be right with you. They're going to be right with you. And not only should you learn this for yourself, but I want you to take these presentations, I want you to take this training, and I want you to make money with it. I want you to be profitable. I want you to generate more revenue. There are less than 500 people worldwide trained in the lost art of neuro-linguistic presentations. And if you think about some of the great presenters, everybody from Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis, Whitney Houston, great actors, you know what they're all practicing? Neuro-linguistic presentation. Presidents, presidents of the United States, world leaders, if you master this art, it is a lost art of communication mastery. If you master this art, you'll be great. Here's what I want you to do while we're on the break. You want to text Shea Brown. That's a weird, weird looking T. Right? Text 202 270 one, six, six, two. You want to text the word, right? Text the word certification. Right? Name and email. Now, let me just go ahead and say one other thing. Some of you are saying, you know, Trevor, I don't really want to learn how to do this, but I know I need me a neuro linguistic presentation. I know that my presentations have not been resonating with the audience that I speak to. I know that I've not been generating revenue from my presentations. I know that I can do a better job. I know that I want people to be captivated. I know that I want people to be impacted with my message. I know that I gotta do a better job. And for some of you, you said I don't have time to master it, I don't have time to learn it but I need a neuro linguistic presentation. And what you can, you can text Shay and you can say, hey, listen, I want you to create a NLP or neuro linguistic presentation for me. Right, you just text the word presentation. So what you would do is you would text the word presentation. So I'm gonna just put here, or presentation. So if you want us to create one for you using these specific techniques, I'm a master, I'm a master practitioner of this, We'll go ahead and create one for you. We'll work the details out depending on how long that is, if you need one for an all-day event, if you need one for maybe a half-day event, if you need one just for uh, maybe a 45-minute pre presentation or 35-minute presentation. If you need one, we're going to help you do it. Now, for many of you, you can use the certification to generate additional revenue. And for many of you, you can use the presentation to train others. It's good training to train the material. It's good training to train the material. When I come back, we're going to create a presentation in real time. But I'm going to tell you, we, got, we all got to do a better job of presenting. We're taking our audiences for granted. We're taking our information for granted. And what we have to do is we have to move into the realm of 4D presentations. 4D presentation. There's like 2D, which is like kind of like flat level. Then there's like 2D, which is kind of like, eh, kind of got a little bit. But we need 
4D presentation that's hitting on all of our senses. We, we're doing presentation that causes people to feel something. Hitting presentation, doing presentation that inflames people's passion. We're doing presentation that people can hear, that they can see with their minds. Remember, the purpose of our presentation is to allow people to see with their minds what we're talking about. And we got to do a better job. I mean, when you think about some of the greatest singers in the world, there have been many singers who were technically sound. But some of the world's greatest singers are not singers who could hit the highest octave or had the loudest voice. It was ones who caused us to feel something. It, 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 was, it was speakers or it was singers, rather, experience. And we got to go from just being okay speakers and good speakers to speakers and trainers who are causing people to have great experiences. After all, it is about the experiences. It's not about your best, look, your best looking boyfriend or your best looking girlfriend. It's about the best friend that you had the greatest experience with. When you think about the friends you had for life, you think about the experiences that you had with them. When you think about great presentations, you think about the experiences. And what we want to do is we want to help you cause others to have amazing experiences with you. And every presentation, you can do it. I don't care if we're talking about taxes. I don't care if we're talking about multi-level marketing or opportunities. I don't care if we're talking about inspiration or motivation. I don't care if we're talking about creativity. I don't care if we're talking about creative ideas. I don't care if we're talking about leadership. There's greatness inside of you. And what we got to do is we got to unlock the greatness in every presentation. So once again, if you're interested in being certified as a neuro linguistic presentation specialist, text Shea Brown at 202. 270-1662. Somebody put that into the feed for me. And if you want the certification, you text the word certification. If you want us to create a neuro linguistic presentation just for you, you text the word presentation. If you want both, text both. Right? And then remember to text your name and your email. And so with it, so and we're gonna interview you, we're gonna talk to you about your message. Um, listen, when you come to we I handpick. Now I'll be honest with you. I handpick every single present, presentation that I work on personally. I do not work on presentations that don't resonate. So if you're not planning on being authentic and transparent, don't send a text message. Meaning we want people who are passionate about what they do. Let me just say you the criteria. People that are passionate about what they do. Passionate about what they do. Hashtag passionate about what they do. People who are authentic in their desire to help others people who are authentic in their desire to help others, and people who are transparent about their journey to getting there. People who are transparent about their journey to getting there. So you gotta be passionate about what you, gotta, what you do, right? You gotta be authentic in your desire to help others, and you gotta be transparent as it pertains to your journey to becoming the master of your particular craft or trade. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys again in 10 minutes.